You are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Good morning, everybody. This is Colin, and welcome to the WHOA GNV Podcast. I am so stoked about this morning. Ty, what is going on, man? Not too much, man. I'm just trying to stay out of the heat. A lot of golf. Uh, <laughs> the humidity. A lot of summer. It's, it's bad. But uh, we have some awesome guests on here today. I saw you guys are running a uh, little movie theater here in July. Just, uh, I just uh, said I'm attending. Ty, you're so sweet for plugging our movie thing yeah. on, <laughs> on our podcast. <laughs> so, yes, when is that, Joanna? July 15th, and we're playing Thor Ragnarok. All right, so we're playing on July 15th? 15th, I'm saying, yeah. yeah. 14th? So we don't know when it is, but we're doing this really awesome like drive-in, scooter drive-in movie thing. It's gonna be in the parking lot. We have a uh, giant cool. LED screen. Um, bring your friends, bring, bring your family, come on out. Um, it's gonna be awesome. And we're watching Thor Ragnarok is the movie. All right, so we're, we're pumped and we'll have an exact date for you <laughs> next time. Actually, Joanna will get it to me on a piece of paper before the end of the episode. Um, <laughs> but thank you for plugging that on yeah. our own show. Hey, um, I liked it. So yes, we have a couple of incredible guests with us, and um, I'm gonna give them a little intro first. Elio Piedra, did Woo-hoo! I say that right? I'm trying yeah. to get my little. I'm trying to get my little dialect. There. Um, you got it. Showman, showman, entertainer. This guy is an award-winning touring artist, clinician, recording percu- percussionist. Just, a ma- just magic is what I would like to call you. I'm gonna call you <laughs> magic. Um, he's here with us today, and then we also have Kelly Hazuri. Am yeah. I saying that right? Yes. Uh, Kelly, <laughs> Kelly is here, and um, she is the founder, owner, CEO, everything of Big Island Bowls right here in Gainesville. I've heard so much about your company, so I'm really, really excited to get yeah, into thanks. it. Thanks. So, uh, but we always like to start with the origin stories. So, what? if you don't mind, please like tell us, you know, what got you into entrepreneurship, how Big Island Bowls, you know, even came about, just just the story, and and then why Gainesville? Like, why is it here? Okay, um, so the story is um, definitely a very interesting story considering we never set out to be entrepreneurs whatsoever, which I think often makes the best startups when it wasn't really what you intended to do and then you stumble upon your passion. Um, so my new husband, we just got married uh, two months ago. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. thank how, you. How many times have you been asked, how's married life? <laughs> I feel no, like that's no, always it's the question. wonderful. <laughs> um, but to back it up a little bit, Brendan and I have been best friends for 12 years. We met at Flagler College, actually. Um, at the time, Brendan had dreads and was barefoot juggling fire, and I definitely did not know we would end up together or starting businesses together. <laughs> oh, like, like really? Oh yeah. <laughs> like this is a legit thing. Like this is oh, not yeah. like some metaphor. No, this he, is was, a- <laughs> he was in the courtyard. That's I feel. When- I mean, I feel like I juggle fire every day, so I just want to make sure. Oh that- <laughs> no, legit fire spinning. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, so we met freshman year and had been best friends ever since, and. Um, So we graduated, I moved to Nashville on a road trip um, and then didn't come back. And then he traveled around the world for about a year. We both ended up back in Florida. And uh, a really good friend of ours that we went to college with, uh, Justin Larkin, give him a shout out. He still lives in Hawaii. Um, was really trying to recruit us and telling us, you know, get out here on the big island. Um, I have jobs for you. I think you'll find it really meaningful work. So at that time, Brent and I had been dating for two weeks. Um, We (laughs) moved to Hawaii together (laughs) and we started working for a company called Pacific Quest, which deals with troubled teens. So it's the wilderness therapy program and it really helps rehabilitate teens, um, getting to the root of the issue with the mind-body connection and really taking them out of their element, no cell phones. They're literally uh, camping in the mountains. Um, And so it was life changing for us. Just really uh, a complete culture switch. We bought a Bronco from a guy in a bar and we lived out of that for about two years. You work for a week and then you're off for a week. So we would just be traveling around the islands. Um, 
So that's really where it started, but I never would have imagined that living in Hawaii would have spurred into you know, a startup business after that. We are both really passionate about our students. They're all ranging from ages 14 to 18. And it was so heavily focused on mind-body connection and really being able to understand the importance of food and really self-care, which I think is really the first time I ever heard that term and language that made so much sense is really having a deep connection with food, with self-care, and really being able to nourish your soul and your body. And um, so we were learning to farm organically, uh, which was new. Uh, Brenda was a lot better at it than I was. Um, So we were farming, teaching these kids. uh, And so we lived there for about two years and became just so passionate about basically these relationships that we were having with, you know, these students and being able to just you know, treat them with compassion, kindness, and really educating them on how to, you know, better take care of themselves emotionally, mentally, physically. And so much of that really did start with such basic things of drinking enough water, eating healthy food, you know, exercising, being in nature. And so whenever we did end up, um, you know, leaving Hawaii, that passion never died down. Um, I think we're both forever changed by how impactful Um, that work was and how special it was and really we're searching for a way to keep that connection and passion and fire going and really being able to also help and serve community and young people. Um, So what led to that decision of, all right, it's time to leave Hawaii? Well, I mean, we were there for a long time. Um, There's many hysterical (coughs) photos of us. Uh, Brendan made us curtains for the Bronco, um, turned it into a little oasis. (laughs) Um, lived out of backpacks for a long time, but eventually, you know, Hawaii is so far away and the six hour time difference really takes a toll on being able to keep up with friends and family. Um, we are getting ready to renew our contracts and, you know, uh, the, we actually were going to move out of the Bronco and actually into a house, which was a very big deal, but the, it ended up falling through. We kind of took that as a sign, like maybe, you know, this chapter is closed and we should go back to the mainland and really try and start something there. So we went from one jungle to the next. We moved to New York, uh, which is where Brendan, my husband, is from, <laughs> yeah, Long Island. Um, so we lived out there, which was a huge culture shock. Um, coming from Hawaii, where it's just really refreshing. Materialism just really doesn't exist in Hawaii. It's really, their values are so grounded. So then to go from there to Long Island was, you know, an intense leap. Um, and so I think we both felt a little bit lost of how to find that connection, passion um, that we had had in Hawaii. We ended up, we're both from, you know, Florida. We went to Flagler. So we, after about a year, moved back to Florida, and we're really just kind of trying to figure out uh, how we could get back to that feeling and that connection. So we started toying around with the idea of making organic acai bowls. That's what we ate every day in Hawaii, and um, it's just the perfect, complete meal. It's one of the only 12 superfoods in the world. It has more protein than eggs. It boosts your metabolism. It gives you energy. It's called the beauty berry. It's just like how is not how is everyone not eating this every single day? And so for it was, For like the handful of people who might not know no, sure. what an acai bowl is, sure. can you just kind of break Absolutely. it down for a second? So acai is a superfood from Brazil. It's actually a berry. It looks really similar. It's almost like a more purple blueberry. Um, you typically, it's highly perishable, so really the only way to eat it is to freeze it and then blend it. Um, and traditionally, it's blended and then served, you know, with granola, fresh fruits, healthy toppers. And so this is what we were eating every single day in Hawaii. And it was so bizarre living in, you know, Long Island when it couldn't really be found anywhere. And if it was, it was powdered, it was artificial. It wasn't at all, um, you know, the food that we had fallen in love with in Hawaii. So then when we got back to Florida, which is, you know, we live uh, in St. Augustine half the time and Gainesville half the time. Uh, my family lives in Gainesville and is from here. We were, you know, just thinking like, how 
this would fit in perfectly. And really, we were also striving to create a business that was more compassionate and kindness driven. Um, to really have that community feel was really important to us. So we got the idea to start a food truck. Um, we didn't have the money yet to just go, you know, all in on a brick and mortar. Um, so then we <laughs> did not realize at the time we were signing up to be food truck advocates um, and then would be in the newspaper on and off throughout the next, <coughs> till now. <laughs> um, and that's really what happened. We, it started off as an idea and uh, we knew how to make it and we knew how to make it you know, better than you know, anyone who was doing it here and really wanted to be able to educate people on nutrition and health. And especially when you know, young people now are really caring about what they're putting in their bodies more than they ever have before. Um, it was, you know, it made, it made sense. Uh, but it's definitely, you know, the low, road less traveled and definitely a labor of love for sure. Awesome, I can't wait to get into it some more, but I wanna ask you real quick, how much is it blowing your mind, all the stuff that's happening in Hawaii right now with the volcano? Oh my gosh, we're in pretty much constant contact with our friends and family. Yeah. Uh, Brendan's uncle lives in Kauai, Justin Larkin, our you know dear friend, he was just in our wedding and just had a baby and got married and he lives very close to where that is all happening. Um, the footage is crazy. Like the stuff well, that have you we, seen this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, in Pahoa and Puna, that's where Brendan and I used to live. So it's completely demolished. No way. In lava. Where you actually used to live? Yeah. Well, 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 I use the term live. I mean, camp in a Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that, like, bootstrap. Uh, I don't know, just that mentality. But you know, go oh, to Hawaii. Young live. people, if you ever have a chance, travel by Bronco. Probably not from somebody in a bar. I do highly recommend it other than that. Awesome, I can't wait to get into it some more, but Elio Piedra. Dude, you were up last night at Miapa, am I right? Yeah, doing your thing. Yeah. This yeah. guy, man, I'm so I'm so grateful that you're here. No, I am Late night, excited. late night doing your thing, and you're like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna wake up super early and of go course. be on this podcast. <laughs> By the way, can we make some noise really quick? Some noise like, ah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> ah! Everybody. Man, I love yeah, it. So I love the energy. Stretch it out. Yeah. So, dude, like, tell us, tell us your story, man. Ah, uh, well, um, well, my name is uh, Elio Piedra. Actually, my full name is Elio by my community, my community uh, from Gainesville, here in the Gator Nation. Actually, gave me the name of Elio. And at the very beginning, I was like fighting against it, <laughs> but uh, I just realized like it was my uh, my stage name, you know, and, and it became like that. But from the actually from the beginning, I, I come from a very humble family from Cuba. Uh, you know, sometimes when I say I'm Cuba, people are like, are you Cuban born in Miami or are you Cuban? <laughs> I, say, I say, listen, man, a I am Cuban 100% as the Cuban cigars, I'm telling you. <laughs> so anyway, I came to the United States like seven years ago um, because uh, my wife, I, I met my wife at a school with nine years old. We actually studied music at the same school of music. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's like, like you know, my, the love of my entire life, you know, so basically uh, she brought me to the United States after uh, six years, she came first, and then she brought me here, and you know, it's been a, an, a very awesome journey, because I came to, the, to Gainesville, you know, from the very beginning, and you know, uh, when I, you know, when I saw this uh, the environment, the community, I mean, I fell in love with Gainesville because I think it's a great community, beautiful people. I mean, it's beautiful itself, you know. Um, and uh, about the music, I've been doing music all my all my life. I started with nine years old, and my specialty is art, drums and percussion, and the singing. Um, oh, actually, sing, sing us something right now. Put you uh, on the spot. Ready, three, two, one, go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just love doing that kind of stuff. I have that right. power now. I can Don't just be do like, that to me. You know, <laughs> let's sing this. It's, Ay, no hay que llorar, que la vida es un carnaval. Y es más bello vivir cantando. Oh, 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 ah. No hay que llorar. ¿Cómo? Que la vida es un carnaval. Y las penas se van bailando. Ay, nada más. So, hey, <laughs> So basically, thank you for letting me put the pressure on you. Like yeah, that. 
No, but I, you know, I got my Cuban coffee, so I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> so I, and, uh, you know, I start singing. When I first uh, got here, I actually, uh, I, I, I got my first exposure with, uh, you know, one of the people that helped me. At first was Gilberto de Paz and, and, and Tropics. I started playing percussion with them and doing some vocals as well. And they really helped me at the very beginning. And, you know, I started performing at Sabor Restaurant, a town of Tioga. Um, you know, some people, they actually, they saw me and say, hey, I think he can do a lot of stuff, you know. So I would like to say hello to them and, and, and let them know like, I am very grateful, um, you know, and I humbly, you know, I want to say thank you for all of that because it's been a long journey, hard work and everything. But right now, um, there is this thing that I have. It's called Latino Sound Machine, and we do everything about entertainment, about making people uh, life, like, a little bit better since we have all this stress around all the time. I don't, you know, my, my life, I want to be surround uh, music, good people, great energy like you guys, and uh, and don't watch the news. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, like, we've, we've convinced him to do a little performance for us, but you're going to have to catch it on Facebook after. We're going to do it on the, on the after the pod session that I'm now referring to as the side hustle. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So it's the side hustle after the pod session, Q&A. We do a little Q&A, and we'll record that. He's going to do a little sing, a little drumming for us, and we will put that on Facebook. So definitely go check out the WHOA GNV Facebook page, and that will be on there. Um, but, man, so I want to I wanna ask you, you're performing like – all the time, everywhere. I mean, I, I was checking out his schedule for this week. Me too. I'm like, how did you how did you fit this podcast? In? <laughs> I'm like, are you like wake up, get out of bed, and start drumming, man? Right? Yeah. I mean, it's just like, I mean, I, I'll tell you two things. Well, I'll tell you the three. The first one is the the passion that I have in my heart. It's like, I know people and the followers all the time is like, Elio, man, that's crazy. You wake up at six and then you finish at 2 a, to 1.30, 2 a.m. It's like, yeah, man, but when you finish and you feel that everyone's gonna take pictures with you and, and everyone's telling you that, hey, I had a blast, it was a great time. I always say like, no matter, people, they will not remember what you play, but how you make them feel. Mm. So. I actually sometimes people uh, text me about how depressed they were before they went to that event or that party or something. And you know, that means a lot to me because that's what music and I think life is about. I think life, life without music would be something a little bit weird, you know? So basically, um, that's my goal, my main goal, especially because again, I am very grateful with my Gainesville community Whatever I am right now, if it's little or big, or I own everything, every single thing, to my community for following me, supporting me, and you know, and being watching podcasts, <laughs> yeah. you know. So, so would you say that that uh, community has just grown from performing, and people are just kind of like they come and they're now they're now they're well, in, now they're in the community, like well, I, <laughs> handing out VIP cards to people, like what do you? Do? <laughs> Well, it's just like, I think uh, I've been growing with the community and the Latino movement at the same time, you know, kind of. And it was funny because I was trying to do like, a, um, for example, like Beatles song on the Latin style. And I recently, actually, I am preparing like a Tom Petty tribute on Latin uh, cool. uh, groove. And, uh, but some, for example, some clients, they are like, Ellie, you know what? I want you. I want you to do what you do because sometimes they don't even care if they understand the 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 song or not. They just want to dance so bad. I mean, they wanna have fun with the with the with the rhythm, with the flavor, and uh, I think that that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So I want to ask you something um, because I think that artists are usually like I don't want to say this is all the time, but are usually looked at as you know, poverty stricken, you know, like if you're an artist, you're poor, you're like really just trying, like trying to make it. And I mean, I don't know, like I'm not getting that perception from you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, maybe this guy has figured it out and maybe he can offer some value to, cause I mean, I think you're exactly right. It's like, this, this is your passion. I'm always telling people like, if you can, if you can, 
you know, live your passion, and I'm absolutely living mine when it comes to entrepreneurship, then like you're the luckiest person on the face of the planet because you're waking up every single day doing exactly what you love to do and, and you're being paid for it, like that's pretty awesome. Um, so I mean, maybe you can bring some you know, context to, to that, like how you are able to make a living off doing what you love. Um, and and then and if you are if it is super tough like what are the other ways you are bringing in revenue in order to live out your passion? Okay, I'll I uh, thank you for that question because actually um, you know I never uh, ever had the opportunity to explain this to the community you know to my community and uh, this is the thing the first and main thing for me in my career as an artist and entertainer is like. You gotta follow your dreams, and no matter what people say around you, you gotta go with the best advice. And I'm telling you this because at very, very at the beginning, people will say, no. Here, there is nothing. You gotta move to New York, to LA. You gotta do this, blah, blah, blah. And it, very deep in my heart, I was like, you know, that what we don't have, that's the thing that I want to create, to bring to my community. And that's basically what I did when I got here, I don't think there is a, actually right now, I don't think there is a, anybody like another Cuban guy playing timbales and singing and, and walking through the people with the drums and doing the Latino show that is, Elio Piedra presenting the Latino show, that is what I am offering. And uh, and that's what is special about, um, just never, you, you gotta trust yourself. You gotta trust your dream, you gotta feel it, and you gotta believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you know, and I'm telling you, and you know that because you're a very successful person and you guys are awesome and you know, you guys know the feeling. If you believe in yourself, there is anybody in this planet that can tell you that you cannot do it. So basically that's what I did. And going to the economically part, man, I am very happy I am doing awesome. And the reason I am doing awesome is because I am working basically every single day of my life. I think I am not working Monday because I, I got to say no to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> and they get mad at me because, oh, but I get booked with two or three months in a bunch. And the reason, because I am working six days a night, I mean six days a week, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, and I am working with another, uh, you know, another a couple of people, part of my team, part of Latino San Machine, because sometimes we have events at the same time at the mm. Hilton here and there. And I have weekly performance, all right? Weekly performance plus all the private events that we have every week. So it's kind of crazy, especially right now. And people, I know sometimes they're like, oh, the summer is coming. I'm like, man, it's a, for me, it's about to get crazy. <laughs> and, and Like my team, I was like asking them, I'm like, hey, I am, I'm legitly thinking of having you here during back to school rush weekend when the <laughs> chaos is going on. I get to see him over there. <laughs> Just drumming. Da, 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 da. I get it's to see him going idea. crazy and like, I mean, hey. And he's like, no, UCE, up that ultimate customer experience and new scooters exactly, for less. Let's exactly, bring in the drummer. Let's exactly, do it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like, you never stop. You never stop. I know, uh, some, I mean, the support of my family is being the key as well. For example, I would like to uh, s mention that about my wife, how much she su support me, uh, my mother-in-law, my because I don't have my family here yet. I'm trying, I'm trying to. Uh, it's very hard, but right now, for example, my wife's family has been my family has been there for me all the time. My wife supporting me for every single crazy idea that I have. Um, to promote me, to make videos, to do every single thing. And people is like, you don't stop, but that's the thing, you never stop. And you know, it's interesting. If I don't do new stuff to improve myself as entertainer, as a person, I get born of myself. So I wanna bring more lights, fog machines, stuff like, uh, for example, right now, I mean, just last night, I, uh, I start walking, playing drums into the people with the light up sticks, and people's like, what is that? I never, ha I haven't seen you, uh, you know, doing that. And I'm like, well, that's the purpose, you know, just su surprising, you know. Um, uh, I wanted to surprise the community doing something new, and I, they, that just came up. So, I don't know. <laughs> Constantly upping your game. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we you have so. to, right? I think yeah. you have to in entrepreneurship, too. I mean, don't, don't you think that, Kelly? I mean, is there opportunity? Totally. I mean, I, I feel like as an entrepreneur, like, 
your entire you're probably the same way we're constantly saying okay what can we what can we do to go up another level and another level and another level um but maybe that's, that's not just me right no. <laughs> no, oh and one more thing yeah this is uh, the other key because i remember what uh, three right the last one is like always um you know it's like taking care of the client i will say or or I will say like stay humble and kind or, you know, for example, I'll give you just a, a little sample. I am like at 2 a.m. I am, and my guys were trying to pack it up, everything, go home. People I, want your autograph. Yeah, yeah they're like. <laughs> and people want to take a picture with you. People, you know, my, and, and not people, it's like my people, you know, like my community or even if I am out, out there in Miami or Texas because I've been many states. I mean, the people, they are here for you. No matter what what happened, you wanna be there for them because they came to see you, to support you. So you wanna pay back. And 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 actually about my my person is just I can fake it. You know, man, I love people. I love just touching people, hugging, I you know, just just spreading the love because at the end of the day, life is about fun. It's about having a good time and uh, it's a I always say it's a dream because you never know if that dream tomorrow is gonna, you know, be Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And so, and so what you're really saying is that that 2 a.m. turns into 4 a.m. because you're taking <laughs> pictures with everybody exactly. and then you're still up at six. Exactly, <laughs> but, but even though I am happy because of them, if they are happy, I am happy. If right. my people, I always make sure they are happy. You know, if my people are not happy, I mean, what am I doing? <laughs> I am an entertainer, that's my job, you know, so. What's your favorite performance to date? Uh, what say that yeah, again? What hard. What is your per- favorite performance up to this moment in time? Looking back, like what was the like one performance you're like that was it? I was like <laughs> so lit that night. I mean, which which one just well, sticks out when you look back? Well, here in Gainesville, anyway, I'm, I don't care. Well, here, well, here in Gainesville, I will say like. Um, Last night was awesome. Was fire, huh? Was Miapa. fire. So it's Miapa 15 year anniversary. 15, 15 anniversary. It was Congratulations awesome. to Miapa. Yeah, we love you. We get coffee in here. <laughs> so and, and out of Gainesville, I mean, I had uh, a awesome experience in Dore Beach with a just fusion quartet. I was playing. Can you mind how how the energy? For example, you even I was listening to the the uh, respiration of the people. You know because they were so focused on the music, like nobody was doing anything at all. You know, some people you are you are playing and they are in the phone, hey, what, what, what? And I'm like, what? And it was so in, into it. And I was like, that that actually touched me because I never, I, I never had seen anything like that, so. And I knew, I knew he was like performing last night. So me, I'm just like Facebook messaging him, <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, don't forget about tomorrow morning. Like, let's make, let's make sure we have our priorities straight here. <laughs> but, but you don't know that I can do. Hey, I'll be there, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the other day I was playing piano with this hand I, because I was working on a musical for UF. And so someone called me, and the, you know what is funny? The actors was doing, you know, the acting thing, and I was playing piano. And hey, I'll be there. Don't worry, play, you know, and playing and talking. And they was like, "How you do?" It's like, "Well, we gotta do what we gotta do," <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> awesome, Ty. Like, what do you got for these for these awesome individuals, my man? For Julio, um, you know, we haven't met before. Um, Which uh, can I explain? Uh, sorry, yeah. I'm really sorry to interrupt you. Like I want to make sure that we're explaining to all of our listeners and to our viewers. Like this, this is what's really, really fun about this is that Ty and I often are trying to find individuals that you know one might not know each other, and maybe collaboration happens there. But like you know, I didn't know Kelly until this morning, <laughs> yeah. so I get to meet a new business owner, and you didn't get, you didn't know Elio until this no. morning. So I mean, the the and that, I think it makes for a great, interesting conversation. Getting to meet new people and um, and making those connections right here at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, so, no, definitely. So um, carry on, my friend. But when I was doing a little bit of research last night, I've promoted a couple of Elio's events on Best of Gainesville without without knowing. So <laughs> boom. Um, one of the ones I wanted to touch on is the Hibvana nights at the Hippodrome. I do a lot of things with the Hippodrome, and I know that's been a very successful thing over there. They do, uh, was it salsa dancing? It's like five bucks. And then maybe after an hour, everyone comes in for free and there's food and it's just, 
he's playing. That's awesome. Um, Friday nights. That's at yeah. the Hippodrome? Is it yeah, every Friday the, night? Yeah. It's yeah. Not, is it every Friday night right now? Uh, well, no, that's the thing. Uh, so, as I mentioned, I... Uh, when is it going to be every night, Elio? It's, <laughs> this, it's this Friday, though, well, correct? Yeah, it is Friday. It is, it, it is coming yeah. one. Cool. But the thing about, I mean, to be able to make everyone happy yeah. and the war a better place. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm kidding. But seriously, I, I also can say, like, Fridays are, are the days that I switch. You know, I say to my clients, hey, uh, Fridays we can, you know, I can play here. And then next Friday I'll be in another. And then the rest of the week I, I'll be in that place. Yeah. If I am not there, it's because I am in another place. And then one of my guys should be there or something like that, you know? Yeah. But Fridays, for example, I perform at different, um, you know, uh, venues like at the bank. You can find um, find me, I don't know, Bahama Breeze or another uh, club or at the Hilton or I don't know. Yeah. Different venues that at the AC Hotel by Marriott, I, I used to play there very often. So, but this coming one, we have the Hibana Nights. Hibana because Hippodromo and Bana because Havana. You know, Havana. Una, una. <laughs> anyway, so um, basically what happened was Gary, one of the coordinator, uh, she came uh, by to Felipe Stacaria. By the way, I would like to say hello to my family from Felipe Stacaria. Awesome stuff, man. I love them so much. I perform there every Saturday, by the way. And then uh, she stopped by and said, like, look at, wh- wait a second, there's uh, almost 300 people here. Yeah. And then it was funny because actually she told me that and she said, Elio, I went over again. I stopped by and then the same thing. So every Saturday is a very big event there. Um, and you know, she kind of liked that. And she asked me, you know, for, for a promotion. I really love that lower level at yeah. the Hippodrome. It's beautiful, all stone. And when, you yeah. know, and I've been performing there for private events, especially for UF, but they never ever had something like this, like, you know, like, oh, you know, like a Latin event or an event like coming up using mm-hmm. that spot. And they actually wanted to use it for, you know, um, community purposes. Let's, let's say it. Yeah, it's if you haven't been to the lower level or the basement at the Hippodrome, it's it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's a full bar. Um, I'm running an event there next month. They show debates down there. They show movies down there. They awesome events, dance parties, all sorts of stuff. It's rentable, but a really cool part of history um, down there in the Hippodrome. And I don't know if I'll be there Friday, but I'm gonna I'm gonna come to one of these one of these down at the Hippodrome. Um, and the other thing I wanted to touch on with Elio is you. We also just talked about all the stuff you do, but you also teach, correct? Um, which I run a golf academy in town, and I know that is a full-time job in its own right. So it's, talk about what types of musicians you're teaching. Do you teach other professionals, kids, students? How uh, how do you basically, you know, the back and forth between teaching and then doing the other things is, is very different. Yeah, uh, well, since I, I've been training, I mean, classically, I had like a classical training. I, I come from the Cuban Academy of Music. Uh, I know how to play piano as well. And I also teach different classes like music theory, uh, well, piano selfish, um, uh, music history as well. Um, so that's why sometimes I start, I, I just met someone like came from the United Kingdom and we started talking about Beethoven, Bach, and yeah. Brahms, and uh, all different international composers. They say, man, you talk about rumba and then you talk about Beethoven, what, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like that because, you know, we have we had a, a very good, um, you know, uh, classes, a good uh, a knowledge that you can get at the uh, conservatory. But answering your question, I teach you in the day, you know, and, uh, you know, at nights I perform. So I teach uh, those classes that I just mentioned, plus uh, drums and every in percussion instrument, like timbales, congas, bongos. And uh, I actually, I did a awesome Afro-Cuban ensemble at University of Florida, and uh, like a couple semesters ago, and it was unbelievable. And after that, I had the pleasure to like create like a bridge between Cuba and U- University of Florida, and then went to Cuba, took lessons with my teachers, and they went to a lot of Afro Cuban museums and all all of that, um, because actually it had um, a lot to do with the class that we we've been developing. So teaching is awesome, man. I love teaching, and uh, you know, knowledge without sharing it, 
it's not, you know, the same thing. Actually, I had a teacher that he, he used to say, like, when you share something that you already own, it becomes, it becomes like powerful, like power, you know, because it will never stop. You know, someone, someone is going to keep teaching your knowledge and teaching and teaching, and that's... Yeah, awesome. I think it helps kind of your cre creativity in your own shows and different things. I know I learn from my students or just different ways to try to teach the same thing over and over. Um, there's no repetition when you love it, and it's it, it shows. Exactly, you know? yeah, Absolutely. yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. That's awesome. And um, I want to bring this into a business conversation for a few minutes because one of, obviously, one of the big audiences that we have watching the podcast and listening to the podcast are those uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, so I have a couple questions that I wanna ask around around entrepreneurship, around business. And the first comes from Eric, who's right over here shadowing today. Hi, Eric, so good to see you, man. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Um, I'm like, it's, it's intriguing to get requests of like, hey, can I like come shadow the podcast and see like what you guys are doing? Before long, we're gonna have to have like a bench out there maybe and <laughs> on the other side of the glass. It'd be kind of cool, you never know. <laughs> like, what, what's this thing gonna turn into? I don't know. Um, but uh, so I'll, Kelly, I'll like let you answer this first. Okay. Um, what was the hardest time in your career and what helped you get through it? Oh man. Um, the hardest time. So I would say that for you know those of you who don't know the entire history of how Big Island Bull started, we originally started in a food truck in St. Augustine. Um, then we opened a second truck, and then we opened our first brick and mortar in Gainesville. Um, the hardest thing for sure was all of the red tape, as you mentioned earlier. Um, and she's talking about before the podcast. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens. We get into a room and we start talking and that's part of it's recorded, part of it's not. But no, before the podcast, Kelly and I were talking about um, about red tape and stuff when it comes to just just government agencies and, right. and different things here in Gainesville. Right, I just or, recently in, like- in the world. Read a quote. What, if you want to learn how to start hating the government, own, try to build something on your own property or start your own business. <laughs> you I was go. like, that's that's fair. I definitely, <laughs> I definitely think the hardest part for sure was in St. Augustine, nation's oldest, you know, city, and a lot of really closed-minded, really you know, older thinkers of there's only one way. And I think the really cool thing about our generation is that there's more camaraderie for sure, with our generation, um, really being in the thick of it together, really building each other up. And I have definitely <coughs> noticed from being in city hall meetings almost every week that older generations, because there was more, you know, scarcity is really going after it for yourself and, you know, eat or be eaten. And so that divide really creates a lot of challenges, I think, for new entrepreneurs, because that mindset, you know, is, is quickly fading. So to create a new idea that scares people that you know they don't understand was the hardest part. We were you know, going to city hall meetings, and we still do because we're actually building our own food truck village. We call it Narnia because it's the only place the government, <laughs> this county can't touch us. Oh, no. This one like awesome you know, piece of land that sits outside the jurisdiction. But, Really being able to get through that close-mindedness and convey your vision and not getting up, I th giving up. We can you give just a little bit of detail about sure, the situation? Sure. Real so quick? food trucks aren't allowed in St. Augustine. There's nowhere to set up. It's not like Jacksonville. It's not like Gainesville, where it's more open and not as rigid. In St. Augustine, it's an absolute no. We we're told no over and over and over and over again. And because the laws were written, basically when we were still using like covered wagons, they weren't applicable to new business ideas. The only thing that they had on the record was a hot dog cart. And they were trying to use the same laws and apply a mobile hot dog cart that you pull manually to a food truck. So that was definitely like <coughs> incredibly discouraging, just being told no, no, no over again. And I definitely remember 
you know, after City Hall meet. And I mean, you just like get crushed. <laughs> and they're televised, which is awesome. You're just getting crushed um, about something you're so passionate about, but you know deep down it's going to work. It's a good idea. There's a spot for it. There's a market. People want it. They just don't even know that they want it yet. Mm. So um, I actually still have a photo of it of when we finally won. And it's. <laughs> so it's you had a, success. We did. I yes. mean, how long was that? So we were, we were able to, so for a year, we were told no, and we were only allowed to set up at special events, and that was it. So we could only do, you know, catering, music festivals, 5Ks, uh, you know, um, community events and that sort of thing, but we couldn't set up in a local, a regular spot every day, which is really, you know, a violation of your right to be able to enter the marketplace. So a lot of the brick and mortars were, you know, ganging up together saying that we were a threat, you know, that there was competition was unfair, which we, as we all know, competition makes everything better. It makes the service better. It makes the food better. It makes the experience better, the ambiance better. It makes everyone raise their game. So it was a long road of a year um, before we finally were able to get a spot on Anastasia Boulevard next to Mojo's Tacos. It's still there. It's been there for four years. It's a beautiful garden built up around it. Um, but being being told no over and over again and really not seeing any, any change was very discouraging. But we just, you know, we knew that it would work. We knew that it would work. And How long did, how long, what, like how much time was invested into that? A year and a half, yeah. Before of you, of already, of having success. a viable business ready and not being able to properly use it and have it, you know, only be utilized on the weekends, but then we did finally, we did finally win. How many times in your own head did you say, this is not worth it anymore, this is not worth it? I mean, did it ever once, or you were just like, I know that this is gonna be fire, this is gonna be awesome, and you were just driven by that, that you were like going to make it happen, and you didn't care whether it took four, you know, a year and a half or four years, but it was gonna happen, like which which was it? Did you ever wanna give oh, up at all? Oh, I am stubborn as hell, <laughs> so I'm also at half Lebanese, and we're already fiery, so I was, I was not giving up. Actually, one of the biggest compliments was when I also have a fear of public speaking. So I would have to go in front of this entire board, the entire city, once a week and give these, you know, Aaron Brockovich speeches. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just remember finally when we won that one of the older gentlemen who had been completely against me from the beginning, never said a kind word of encouragement and shut me down every time. He said that he predicted that in five years I would have his seat. And then I just remember I was like, Damn. "Wow!" <laughs> I mean, that's kind I was of a like, huge well, this compliment. Is, in a way. Yeah, I was like, "This it was worth fighting for. Doing something different, taking the road less traveled, is so rewarding." So now there's other food trucks. In so Saint we Augustine? have we have the well, the, we're still <clears throat> that uh, fight. Um, really, actually, you know, when one door closes, usually a better door opens. If we had just won right off the bat, you know, for our food truck to have a spot on the beach, it would have stopped there. But because we were constantly said no, we are like, we need to find a new way of doing this. And so that's what led us to our new project, not new, it's taken two years to build it, but um, we create, we're creating the Village Garden Food Truck Park in St. Augustine. And so we were like, this is, there's a need for this. People are obsessed with food trucks. It's a, a fad that's not going away. People want fresh local food. And so that's what inspired us to buy this property and build it ourselves. We are like, they're not allowing other food trucks. They're not allowing places for these people to do business. So that's another entrepreneur path. Create it. If it's not there, create it yourself. That's great. I mean, do you realize that like you're like this huge advocate for food trucks now? <laughs> like, 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 and like, and you're and like the food truck queen. Well, like, and, I'm, and I own like, a brick and mortar, so it's 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 you know all of I I own both, and all of the fears are so unfounded. They both have their strengths and weaknesses, and bring so much to the table. But they definitely are not in competition. There's room at the table for everyone. If you're good at what you do. 
and you're you have good food it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's in a food truck or a brick and mortar you know the food truck business fascinates me i mean do you guys look at it's a hustle it's a hustle so <laughs> me, me and too. i love that it's, me too i, I love that it. i love it yeah <laughs> like i love the hustle so like yeah i mean but you know i look at the other scooter dealerships here in town and like i obviously want to <clears throat> beat them, I want to be better than them, I want right. to offer a better experience than them. So, no no offense guys, if you, you listen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, is it like that with the, you know, I mean, because these food trucks often, they're like guys are like all parked out there. I mean, it, does it feel more like a team event? Like all the food trucks coming together and doing this? Or is it like, I'm gonna park next to you and I'm gonna destroy your face? No. <laughs> <laughs> Which is it? I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> Um, it's actually, it's, it's the opposite. It's really community and USC really talks. all of us helping each other out. And I think in particular, I mean, anyone who owns a small business, the camaraderie is there because everyone, if they're being honest, it's, it never started off easy for anyone that I know. And so I think that that's, you're bonded through that struggle. Like the food truck is really hard and especially but it's a great medium like for those people that, you know, we didn't have the money to open a brick and mortar yet. And so it's such a great medium. Um, so no, we're all really supportive of each other. And of course we're competing, but we're also like serving different food. So I mean like, you know, they're making, you know, tacos and pe- you know pizza or whatever their specialty item is. Well, I don't specialize in that and you definitely do that way better than I do. So it really is just supporting each other. That's kind of the fun part about a food truck is you can go get like six meals. <laughs> six yeah. different things. It's the gray's like, ability. You yeah. go with your crew and you all get, you know, one thing or two things from each spot. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and you do it. Totally. Yeah. So, um, Elio, my friend, what has been the, you know, what was the hardest time in your career and what helped you get through it? Uh, well, I can actually tell you that on I think 2000, it was 2013 I guess. Well, you know how I was, I was trying to jump from you know doing other stuff. Uh, I was when I got here actually. Uh, let me tell you, I started working at a restaurant for a year and a half because I mean I wanted wanted to make some money to buy my instruments and my stuff. And uh, I have uh, this uh, coordinator of a church in North Carolina. And we actually agree um, in, you know, having like a big course for a year and everything. Every, everything was fine. I went to Punta Cana with my wife to Dominican Republic. Uh, lovely vacations. I actually, I, <clears throat> I, um, I was uh, leaving my job before that. So I left my job, went to Punta Cana. When I came back, you know, the guy called me and said, hey, I don't know, something happened, but we can just... We don't have what we supposed to have to start right now. And I was like, okay, so what am I supposed to do? So um, they actually sent me some, like, some checks to pay rent and stuff because they, we had an agreement. But I was like, listen, man, life is not about that. I need to make a living and we had this. And, but just to give you a short um, you know, uh, segment of what happened after that. I told my wife, you know what? I am not going back. I start the, I, I took this this decision because I I am following my dreams, and I am not you know giving everything away now. So I kept going, and then uh, my first actually my first job as a uh, instructor was a guitar center. I love them there. They are awesome, and they help me a lot. I had a great exposure, especially because I create like the drums clinic every Saturday. I think when I left, they stopped doing that. But uh, in a couple of weeks, I gained like 13 students. And at that moment, it was kind of crazy because it was so hard to gain students. We were so slow. I think it was in the middle of summer B or something like that. So, <clears throat> you know. That's that was that's a moment I will never forget because you know I, I had to make a decision and get I can tell you man I, I I didn't have any living I wasn't making a living at all I was like in a limbo like oh my gosh this is a bubble I don't I, this is not happening but it was happening and it, and it was a lesson that I actually was needing to take at that moment and I I am gra- grateful today for that lesson so. Let's take the last five minutes to talk about Gainesville. Yeah. Like, what 
what is your favorite pastime? Elio, you go first. Like, what is your favorite thing to do in Gainesville, hands down? Uh, Besides performing, like we know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, besides performing? When you're not performing, like, what is? what are you doing, man? Um... I don't know. I oh well, you know what? I like. I, I really love actually going to the trails, or and biking. Do you know just biking with my wife or just walking by the hand and enjoying the. the man, it's so beautiful, man. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Let me tell you, when I go down there to Miami, the least I can go is like two hours or something. See, I miss Gainesville so much. Because the environment, I am a country guy from Cuba, you know, you know, for from the woods and everything. So I I am used to it. So when you see Gainesville with that beautiful hair <laughs> falling from the tree, um, the tree, so it's amazing, and I love it. You know, the trails. Yeah, awesome. I will say, Kelly, what about you? I would definitely say that I always grew up kayaking with my mom. So anytime I'm kayaking or in the springs, I'm happy I'm at one with nature um it's just there's really no place like it that I've ever experienced we're so lucky to have such beautiful springs be able to relax with your friends I mean it's just the best oh, yeah. so many people don't even realize that they're here <laughs> yeah. which, blo- that's what, that's which what, blows my I know, mind like, I was like have you ever been to springs the what like and which one also, <laughs> yeah, yeah you know exactly <laughs> <clears throat> exactly. I mean, uh, my wife and I, we were up near near Madison, which is where my wife's uh, family lives, and um, closer to the Tallahassee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about that place. Uh, but, like, I didn't even realize that, like, Blue Springs is out there, and, like, we took the kids out there. I mean, just beautiful, man. Just had a great time. I mean, yeah, I mean, and everything is just within reach of Gainesville. So, um, Ty, wrap us up, man. Do you have any last things, last questions? I'm glad you didn't ask me uh, what I like to do in Gainesville, because I'm <laughs> my, my favorites. But uh, I would just say on that same point, it's the people. You know, I just met Elio, I met Alex Willis. Meeting all these people doing the podcast, um, we're so lucky to keep kind of broadening our circle. And that's what I love about Gainesville is I'm always looking, there's new restaurants, there's there's something new now almost every day. Um, and I just think the excitement keeps building and it's it's fun to play a small part in uh, you know having these cool conversations, meeting new people. And uh, thank you guys for coming. If you guys would just wrap up one where we can find you uh, on social stuff and then we'll uh, let you go. Sure. Um, so our Instagram is at Island Bowls Gvel, and then our Facebook page is Big Island Bowls Gainesville. So I would love for you to follow us, see what we're doing, see new recipes, um, check out some happy affirmations. We're all about good food, good people, good vibes, and we look forward to seeing you. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. This was yes, this was awesome. Right. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So uh, my social, you can find me on my social media. Um, my uh, Latino Sound Machine Entertainment page. You can like it and you will keep you posts about every single event that is coming up. Uh, uh, on Twitter, at Elio Piedra. On Instagram, at Elio Piedra. You can go to eliopiedra.com, my website, to you know stay tuned with uh, tours, events, and everything. But before uh, I finish, I will say like, it's been a pleasure to be here with Kelly. I am, I am beyond honor and humble and I don't know what to say for being here with you guys. I don't have, you know, I mean, I, I, I feel very grateful for the opportunity. I think you guys are awesome. Awesome. What you're doing is awesome, man. And I, I, I hope the community is as grateful as I am with you yeah, because you guys are doing an awesome job. And, uh, and, and scooter, everything. Just your word is amazing, man. And you're, <laughs> Thanks, man. You're, you're making uh, the Gator Nation a, be- a better place for everyone, you guys. So I am, you know, very uh, excited for be here, um, for being here. And also, you know, the best thing about this is like, I really, I really believe that every every single human being shine with his own light. So no matter what your talent, your life is, even if you are a drummer like me, we can help each other and we can get get a wet or whatever. We can, we can, sh- it's like no one is is the same, you know? For example, Kelly is like a mind blowing with all her talents <laughs> and I do my thing. You are an odd, I mean, everyone is different. 
you know, Ronald is an amazing camarographer and everything. And it's, it's just like the human nature is so amazing. And, you know, that's what so is. So focus on that, right? Build, yeah. build those relationships. Exactly. And growing fast. And what uh, you were saying is like, you know, it's amazing how the Gator Nation is growing. How let's grow together, you know, and that's the beauty of that of being growing and, and developing. So thank well, you for having me, man. Well, thanks for being here. I can tell you, like, it's no secret that Ty and I are just super, super passionate about Gainesville. Um, that's why we wanted to make sure that everybody understood, you know, that this podcast was coming from Gainesville. And yeah, we're going to highlight Gainesville businesses and Gainesville individuals. And, and I know that we're going to bring in people from outside the city and like and interview them as well. But like we wanted everybody to understand that this podcast was coming from Gainesville because we love this place so much and we're extremely passionate about it. So that's it, guys. This is the WHOA GNV podcast, the podcast bringing you incredible individuals, incredible businesses that make you go, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And um, I did get confirmation from Joanna on the drive in. It's July 15th. There's going to be free popcorn and drinks. And I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of free stuff because it's just the way we do things. Um, so hopefully you guys can make it and, and be there. And Gainesville, thank you so much for listening. World, thank you so much for listening. We are out. Hey, give us a little drum thing on our way out. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. This is the tribute to the Salsa Queen, Celia Group, oh my God. Oh, no, ah, ah, ah.